Let's review what happened in the last video, because in general, it's just kind of confusing, and it's always good to see it a second time. And then we can think a little bit about how these market dynamics could be manipulated so that you don't have the Chinese currency getting more expensive. So in the last video, we started off with an exchange rate of 10 won per dollar. We saw that this manufacturer over here in China had to sell his goods for the equivalent of 10 won in order for him to make a profit. That this guy in the United States had to sell his goods abroad, or we'll say in China, for the equivalent of $1. Now at this exchange rate, this price was $1, one US dollar in the United States. And at this exchange, and at this exchange rate, this guy had to sell his cola for 10 won so that he could get his dollar. So we kind of just drew it out. The guy would send, and we said at that price, so for 10 won, which was $1, at $1, there was demand for 100 dolls in the United States. So we saw this dynamic. He would ship 100 dolls to the United States, and then the United States would ship him back $100. He would sell those dolls for essentially a dollar each. He would get back $100. On the other side of the equation, the cola manufacturer, if he were to sell it for 10 won in China, there's demand for 50 cans of soda. So he would send 50 cans of soda to China, and they would send him 10 won for each can, 500 won. Now, what happened in that situation is that the Chinese manufacturer had 1,000 won that he needs to convert into dollars, into $100 preferably, if, he, if that exchange rate were fixed. The American manufacturer, and let's say that these are the only, two, the only two actors in our scenario, has 500 won that needs to convert into $50. So if we just look over here, here's someone who wants to convert 1,000 won. He wants to, he, or he wants to convert into 1,000 won. Let me be very careful. He wants to convert his $100 into 1,000 won if the currency were to be uh, held constant. But there's only 500 won being offered in the market. There's only 500 won being offered in the market. So he was going to have to offer more dollars per won than he would if there was more won in the market. Now you can look at the other side. This American manufacturer has 500 won from his sales in China. He wants to convert it if, if the currency was pegged into $50, but maybe he could do better than $50 a year. And as we can see, there's more demand to convert the won than there is to convert the dollars. He wants to buy $50 using won. This guy, this guy wants to sell wants to sell a hundred dollars into won. So if you look over here, the supply, supply of dollars, supply of dollars is much greater than is much greater than the demand than the demand for dollars. And you know in anything, if the supply of apples is greater than the demand for apples, then the price of apples would go down. And the opposite is happening here with the won. The demand for won, this is the demand, the demand for won is much greater than the supply of won than the supply. And we know that when the demand is greater than the supply, the price needs to go up. And so we saw a scenario where the price of the dollar will go down in terms of won. Now all that means is if you had to give 10 won per dollar, now you're going to have to give fewer won per dollar. The price of the won was go, would go down. If the price of apples in wands goes down, instead of offering uh, 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 10 apple, 10 won per apple, you probably offer 8 won per apple. So we see the exact same thing for the price of the dollar. But that's equivalent to saying that the price of a won goes up. And we said eventually, and I'm just making this number up, it's hard to predict what the actual settling price would be, we eventually get to 8 won per dollar. And then we said at that exchange, and actually I'm going to change the numbers a little bit just to make it a little bit cleaner, at that exchange rate, at 8 won per dollar, these 10 won, do these 10 won dolls would now cost $1.25. And let's say that at $1.25 in the United States, there is demand for 60. Let me make that. There's demand for 60 dolls. I'm changing the numbers a little bit from the last video, just to make the numbers work out a little bit better. So you could just ignore the numbers from the last video. And remember, the old demand, when the 10 won dolls were only $1, so the old demand, old demand, old demand, we have it up here, 
was a hundred dolls. Was one hundred. One hundred dolls. So it makes sense. If dolls are one dollar, people are going to buy, are going to have more of them. If dolls go up to a dollar twenty-five, the demand will go down, and say they'll go down to sixty dolls. Now on the other side of the equation, the one dollar can of soda at eight won per dollar will now sell in China for eight won. And remember, remember what the old price was. The old price in China. When the currency rate was ten to one, was ten won. So the price, so the let me write it here. The price, the price of the cola went from ten won, ten won, down to down to eight won. So the demand now that the cola is cheaper in China, the demand went up. And I'll change this number too. So don't do the eighty cans. We'll say that the demand, the demand in China went from fifty cans. We saw that up here. He had to ship 50 cans when it cost 10 won per can, so it went from 50 cans up to, and maybe I should make it go up. The demand went from 50 up to, let's say 75 cans, 70, 75 cans, just like that. I'm using these numbers because it's going to lead to cleaner numbers. So now, what is the actual scenario? In the last video, I said work it out yourself, but I realize the more concrete examples of this, the more it'll kind of sink into your brain. So now what is the trade balance going on? So going from China, so if we look at so China, China, and then you have the US. China and the US. Over here we're going to be shipping, we are now going to only be shipping sixty dolls. So sixty sixty dolls. And then the US is going to ship back sixty times a dollar twenty five that is $75, right? $1.25 for $60 means you're going to get $75. So 75 US dollars are going to go back to China. So that's due to the dolls. And let's think about what's going to happen due to the soda. We are going to have we are going to have 75 cans of soda. 75 cans of soda. Let me write 75 cans are going to be shipped to China, and then China is going to send back what? 75 cans at eight at eight won per can. At eight won per can, 75 times eight is 75 times eight is what is that? Seven is five, five six. It's 600. So for those 75 cans, he is going to get back 600 won. He is going to get back 600. 600 won. So now what's happening? The Chinese manufacturer over here on the left wants to convert, so wants or needs to convert, wants to convert, wants to convert. What does he have? He has $75, wants to convert $75 into, if we assume that a the, the currency is now 8, and he says, well, I'll just get it at the market rate into roughly 600 won. Into 600 won, right? 75 times 8 is 75 times 8 is 600. 8 won per dollar. And then the US manufacturer wants to convert, wants to convert, wants to convert. He's got 600 won, 600 won from his sale of soda into and if he assumes he can get kind of the last market rate 600 divided by 8 is into $75 $75 so what just happened here now the supply of dollars this is the supply of dollars is equal to the demand for dollars and also the supply of one the supply of one right over here is equal to the demand for one. So now we are, depending how you view it, we're we're sending the same dollar value to the U.S. as we're sending back to China, or we're sending the same yuan value to the U.S. as we're sending back to China, and the currency has has uh, is now in balance. It really shouldn't shift. And so I want I really wanted to go through this example again to show you that be, when you have freely floating currencies. Eventually, the 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 trade should one currency should get more if there is a trade imbalance. One currency will become more expensive than the other until the demand equalizes in both countries, so that you eventually do have a trade balance. Hopefully, that doesn't confuse you too much. And the next video, we'll talk about how 
a government, and we'll talk about the Chinese central bank in particular, could intervene so that this doesn't happen, so that they can always ship more to the US than the US ships to China.